Okay, so Octane Moto. <laughs> In answer to your question, yeah, I did clean up a little bit. I mean, I can actually walk around, the table's clean. I have a ton of projects left, so, you know, it's not gonna, uh, it's gonna be a do as I go. Uh, my wife and I are now grandparents, and we're gonna be spending the next few days um, visiting the, our cute little granddaughter, uh, 19 and a half inches, seven pounds, uh, born just the other day, so. Uh, we're gonna be kinda busy, so I'm not gonna be able to do any more than I've done, but you can see, you know, I've cleaned up a little. You know, I've got all my electronic waste over there, cause, I, people bring me printers, DVD players, TVs, monitors, you know, for whatever reason they just bring them to me and most of them work or don't work but I, if I can't find a home for them they go there. And I've got more behind me that I gotta deal with but for now that whole corner is gonna be filled. Next e recycle isn't until October so yeah. Anyway that's not what this video is. Oh by the way, a little bit more progress on the Gilson here. And uh, I did get the new coil in, so it's the right one, so I should be good. I'm going to try and shorten the lead. This is way too long. Interestingly, there are no videos on this, so I might just do one. This is more about this. <laughs> so this is my in-cabin air filter for my car, and I haven't replaced it in about a year. I keep forgetting. I normally try to do it every six months. Look what I found when I pulled it out. It's supposed to be this color. <laughs> First of all, yuck. Second of all, there was apparently something in my car, or trying to, uh, dumping uh, corn and stuff down here. And I, every time I went to start the car, it smelled bad. And I couldn't, I'm like, what is that pungent, icky smell? No, I know. Um, so I've checked. There's nothing living in there. So I replaced the filter. The smell's gone. And I don't know. Anyway, just as check your filters. <laughs> if you've got an in-cabin filter, check it. <laughs> that's all this is really about so that's it later so even more progress um, notice I got the rim painted and if you look at the back and you look at the front you go oh my god what a difference in the white I did try to find that and couldn't um, but that's okay white works and it doesn't stay that white um, I'll show you in a second here. So, starters in. In fact, the front's almost complete. In fact, from here forward, everything but the bodywork's complete. From here back, the bodywork will be complete, or um, the frame will be complete, clean, painted, touched, you know, whatever I need to do. The bodywork I'm waiting on for probably another week. Um, and, uh, there's another reason for that but <clears throat> so what I did was I used uh, mineral spirits the hardener in this white now if you look closely and if you can see it it's actually two different whites this is the what spilled out today when I was painting and this is what I spilled out when I first used this paint uh, three years ago three years ago on their front door that is going to be a lot closer to that rear color than to the front one so those don't don't stay white for long right so uh, this is what I used to spray it on with was a little concerned at first but it actually worked quite well um, it has a very fine mist it goes on better and smoother than um, rattle can paint does, so that's nice. L less overspray, some, but less. Um, some of the negatives, well, you have to buy these cartridges. Yeah, a couple bucks. The local hardware store has a supply of them. They're two dollars a piece. Not the worst thing. Um, the other thing is, as you spray, this gets cold. I mean, it gets ice cold. Much like a can of compressed air for your computer, you know, the longer you spray it, the colder it gets. Same thing, because they use probably use the same propellant. Uh, but yeah, all I did was uh, three ounces of paint, an ounce of the mineral spirits, and basically a splash of the hardener. A little bit more than a splash, but not by much. In you know this paint, this is a um, Rust-X metal paint, oil-based. The other problem with the overspray, 
Um, because this is an oil-based paint, it doesn't dry. So anything in the immediate area uh, that you're painting, any overspray that falls, sticks. So you want to be careful of that if you ever do this. Um, now, I wouldn't use this for the entire body. I only use that today because it's hot and humid out, and it's so humid that painting with the air gun is almost impossible because I'd have to open the garage door because it just gets too much um, overspray in here. Uh, just doing, you know, one one part. And um, so if I were just to do one rim, for example, using my air gun, this place would be it would just, I wouldn't be able to stand in here. Um, so I have to open the garage door. But today, it's so humid that it would take, uh, I'm not even sure it would flow out right. Um, so I had this. Uh, I think I picked it up years ago. I wasn't, I was thinking maybe I'd use it for something. Because it was on sale. I think I got the thing for three bucks. And um, so I thought, well, today's a good day to try it. And I was very, I got to tell you, I'm very pleased with it. And there's still enough left in here to do the back rims, which I'll do tomorrow probably. So just know this does work. If you're ever thinking about trying it, it does work. Like I said, minimal overspray. And um, when you first spray, it takes a second or two for the paint to come out and subsequently anytime after that it takes a there's a little bit of a delay from the time you hit the button to the time the paint actually comes out but I have to say overall not bad not bad and uh you know I, I I'd say it did a pretty good job I have a few runs on I think of the other rim because that was the first one I did and it um um came out a little too, you know, I left it in one spot a little too long because I wasn't sure it was coming out at first. So, but again, it's going to dry a lot closer to this color. I mean, it won't be exactly this color, but it'll be close. It's definitely going to be a much warmer white. I mean, it's dry now, but in another year, it'll be closer to that color. I don't know why it does that, but just that's what that paint does. So, um, and then in the case of our front door, which is what I used it for initially, uh, it actually worked out because when I first put the door up, I was like, oh, that's too white. But over time, it's, you know, settled down. Um, so I've got this off now. I'm just going to, I just got to tape up the uh, emblem. And then this, um, so over the next week, I'm going to sand and prep this. I've already got the side done, the side covers done at the top cowl. I've got to do that yet. Um, so that, that's got to get done. And uh, the other piece, the, the, the part that goes here, it's outside right now. Um, so, and the, the running boards. All of that, I'm going to do it one time using the air gun because it's just it's going to work out better in the long run so anyway uh, that's the update that's where we're at but uh, yeah it's making progress little by little so but now that I got the front wheels just they're just sitting on there but that's good enough now I can take it off the jack stands move the jack stands to the back which I'll do tomorrow take the tires off tape them up and uh, you know if the bead breaks, I'll take the rubber off. If it doesn't, I'll do what I did with the front, which is just tape them off and uh, uh, just paint the rims with the tires on. I hated doing that, but uh, these front tires are really bad. i got to replace them anyway. Uh, but I probably won't do that till the fall. So when I do that, um, I'll repaint the rims with... Uh, you know, with the tire off, and I might even just touch it up if, you know, if I can, you know, if it's, they're not too damaged or whatever. So, okay, now I'm rambling, so we're going to call that good.